Aloha, my friend, my friend. This is Beautiful Dreamer. It is page 54 out of the Ukulele Songbook. Uh, yeah, 50 all-time classics. This is volume two by Mr. Thomas Ballinger. All of these, again, are in the key of C, so they're not too terribly hard. Once again, C is our middle C. It's our thickest string on here for a C major. Our D is second fret, second finger, on the same string to give a D minor. We have an open E for our E minor, boom! Or we could take the D minor and scooch that up and bar. Same thing as the E minor. Heck, we could even play a G major and put down our E note for an E as well. Very simple way to play it. It's a relative minor. So, Beautiful Dreamer is in the key of D. There are two sharps, meaning the D and the G have a relative sharp. That relative sharp is going to be the F sharp. The addition of the C sharp makes D awesome. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. If we had C, it would sound like a ta do, but we really want a T do. So it needs to be a C sharp. Awesome. Uh, so we need to go with that C sharp. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D. So when we play this D major, we've got beautiful dreamer, E minor. Wake come to me. We're gonna then go to an A7. Looks exactly like an A major, except we get rid of this note, which is the A. If we walk the A major down to having these two notes, we would have an A major seven. And then if we get rid of that note entirely and leave the G note, the G over the top of an A, A, C sharp, and E, makes a dominant chord. Or, in this case, it sounds like an E diminished which would result to D, but I digress. D major, E minor, A7, and then D again. The whole song consists of that. The only time we're gonna have another chord besides that, it will be the E7. Now check this out. In the book, Thomas shows us how to play an E7 with our first finger on the first fret, second finger on the second fret, and third finger on the second fret, but we skipped the E string and played only the C and the A strings, giving us E7. Now this E7 is actually printed in the book on the next page, page 55. It's the fourth chord and example on the first line. However, an inversion of this would take the D7, just like we took the D minor, switched our fingerings, moved up to an E minor. We're gonna take the D7, switch our fingerings, and scoot up and bar. So it's gonna look like this. First finger is gonna play the C string at the second fret for the D note. We're gonna skip a fret entirely, but not a finger. Our third, I'm sorry, our second and our third finger are gonna play bookends here on the high G at the fourth and then the E string at the fourth and the pinky is gonna play the fifth fret, giving us another version of the E7. I use these in tandem when we get down to the second to last stanza measure before the end. Here we go, follow along. Um, since it is three, four, and I think this is a valid song to do this on, we're gonna give it a oom, pop, pop, which means you can do a low bass note of a D and then pluck the two outer notes, the F sharp and the A. D, harmony, harmony, solo note. Beautiful dreamer, wake unto me. Starlight tend to drops so Sounds of the rude world heard in the day, lulled by the moonlight, have passed away. Beautiful dreamer, meet of my song. Here it is. Oh, uh -huh.
do the melody line over the top of it with the G. It's a fun one to go through. We could also do it finger style. Of doing a different variation of up and down rake picking, you could also do C, E, C, A for most of this. Beautiful dreamer, going on to me. Hear how beautiful that sounds? I really hope you enjoyed this lesson in this song. I did. If you have a suggestion or you have a song that you would like to learn, please put it down in the comment section or subscribe. Aloha.